getting so much done this morning and I was like cruising along and thinking, boy, Lord, this is kind of cool. Maybe I'll get everything done that I want to do today. Not. <laughs> just seemed like one thing after another started to come up and boy, time just kept going slower and slower, but I just didn't seem to get things done. You know, and Sometimes it's that way. You always have a idea for yourself of what you want to do. And then there's what life throws at you. And then there's what God has planned for you. So there's always kind of like a three-part thing going on. You, God, and life. <laughs> Sometimes it may seem like as though the enemy's mixed in there too, but you know, and your own flesh and you know, relationships and everything else. But the bottom line is God can redeem your time. He can bring it back to you in ways you never thought of or imagined. So don't be afraid to stop your normal routine in order to do what he wants you to do. And don't be afraid to allow for interruptions to happen. First, just like after I had taken my bath, I had a knock on the door and it was like, oh wow, it's a maintenance guy. You know, and the apartment maintenance man came up and he asked me if I had taken a shower and I said, well, no, I took a bath. And as it turned out, the drain from where I'm at, upstairs, the back overflow, you know, because I take a bath and it had gotten up pretty high and I guess gone in the overflow, had leaked. So it had gone downstairs into an apartment. So we spent a little time and, you know, he was repairing it. And so I just watched because I'd never really seen the overflow taken apart. You know, I've taken apart other things lots of times, but never done the overflow. So it's kind of fun visiting and just relaxing and not worried about you know recording or doing things but just allowing for those opportunities that God brings into your life to discover and uncover opportunities to just be you to be a friend to somebody and to share and to learn things and to experience and then who knows maybe down the road we might talk about other topics and subjects you never know with God in control he can lead you all kinds of places you never thought of the fruit of the spirit is love God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Unto you which believe he is precious. We love him because he first loved us. The love of Christ constrains us because we thus judge, and that if one died for all, then we are all dead, and that if he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. In other words, if God died for us, we ought to die for him. We ought to live for him, like he told us to. Deny yourself, take up the cross, follow me. You, know? you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Taught not by man, but taught of God to love one another. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity covers a multitude of sins. Walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. I can't think of a more important one-word definition of what we should do on a regular basis as a Christian, and that is love. Now, if you could take love is patient, love is kind, love is meekness, love is justice, love is forgiving love, bears all things, hopes all things, believes all things, endures all things, and define that to the way you treat everyone in life, I think you're going to find that you're probably a born-again Christian. <laughs> you're probably cruising along and doing okay. But for the rest of us, you know, it's kind of tough to love people, isn't it? I mean, some people will piss you off, some people make you angry, some people get you frustrated, some people just blow your doors right out. Well, the way that you deal with that is that God doesn't say, oh, well, I want you to wake up today and love the world. No, he says, I'm going to be working on you and in you to accomplish through you what I want to do with my spirit working through you to other people. You can't do it in and of yourself. For in that he had to die for us, as one man died for all that we might live for him, that... He is the one who is accomplishing the purpose, not we. See, there's where people make the mistake. They think that they can do it, or that becoming religious and having a relationship with Jesus, now, because they've got two parts of it, they can do it themselves. You can't. <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit is love. 
You can only love with as much measure of the Spirit as you have inside you. If you find, in, find yourself in a predicament where you can't love somebody, as God has told you to, love one another, it's the measure or amount of Spirit you have inside. Meaning that when you first become born again, you're a baby little tiny Christian. And then as you grow, your Spirit gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And because your Spirit, which is like a baby Christian inside growing, gets bigger, it has a bigger appetite for things of the Spirit. So you have to feed it more. So the bigger you get, the older you get, the more you take in a spiritual food, the Bible, the more that you are able to produce spiritual fruit, love. So your capacity to love really is directly proportionate to your spiritual diet and your spiritual maturity. If you can't love somebody, you're just a baby. <laughs> you can tell the babies from the adults. Pretty simple. The men of God that really are men of God and not just titles are the ones that have great capacities for the Holy Spirit to just go whoosh, whoosh, and it splashes in and splashes out all over everybody around them. Meaning that they love abundantly. And so a lot of times you'll find brand new Christians fully grown. It's a miracle because they love. So it's kind of like, you know, a reverse of what we think is maturity. The more that you want to have capacity to love, the more you have to allow for that Holy Spirit inside you and that baby spirit that you are to grow and become more so like it to Jesus. Or God takes you and you have already been in that vein. He remakes you into the vessel that has the capacity to hold so much more of his spirit. Kind of like he did with Jesus. Sort of. See, Jesus, it was prophesied that he would have the spirit without measure. You couldn't measure how much spirit was in him because it was immeasurable. He was God. So when he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, when the spirit actually came on him after 40 days in the desert, wow, super filled, or you could say overflowing. And so for you, if you really can't get into this God is love and you need to love somebody and you really get kind of like irked and twerked and torqued and ticked off and it takes you time, you know, well, every day your measure of faith is growing and your measure of maturity is growing and every day it gets a little easier to love somebody or love someone. So like if you're focused in on someone that you don't love yesterday, you might love them in the next few days because you're asking God to help you to expand Take deeper breaths. Breathe in the Spirit of God, so to speak, and take in the capacity of what He can do that you can't. And suddenly you'll find, you know what? Man, you're beginning to like that person. That's God. Sorry, it's not you, but it is God working in you. So don't think that in you there is that ability that you can change yourself and make yourself into being able to love somebody. No. It is God who worketh in you both to do and to will of his good pleasure so that he could accomplish his will through you so that by his spirit he would receive glory for the works that you do in his name by his power working through you to accomplish what he wanted to do in the first place. Do you get that? If you don't, replay it real slow, write it down. <laughs> don't think that just because you're a born again Christian that suddenly you're going to go, oh, well, I'm going to be loving today. And then you've got some formula where you say, I love you, 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 and you know, devil, you get back, I love you, I love you, I love you, and then you do this, that, you know, and you know, I claim it, name it, you know, and I'm shaming it, faming it, you know, and doing all these other things, you know, that you just make up into your own mind with a religion and kind of trying to play it off to relationship and reality. You can't do it. It doesn't work that way. The only way it works is it is God in you. Emmanuel. God is love, so in order to love, you have to have God in you. And if you want to know how much of God is in you, you measure it by how much you love. ABCs of the spiritual truths? Oh well, we learned that in the Jesus movement. Hey, peace, love, joy, man. Check it out. All we had to do was measure and you know, look around. Hey, that guy's a loving person. He's got lots of God in him. Ooh, that guy really hates. Huh? Man, if he's bitter and anger, and no wonder he's got problems. He doesn't have God in him. 
So if you want to know if you got God in you, <laughs> look around and see who you can't stand. <laughs> well, you know, maybe you need more God in you. And God in you is the hope of glory. So you better start working on it and allowing God to be full of you rather than you full of yourself. <laughs> but be filled with the Spirit of God. And you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh or even the sins of the flesh or be fleshy. So be filled. Be joyful. Be blessed. But know this. You want to measure it. It's by how much love you got. By this shall you know that you're my disciples indeed, in that you have love for one another.